Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. Another Senbet time, and this is the 16th uh, Sabbath, uh, Shabbat, which is known as Beshalach. 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 And the verse begins at um, Exodus 13 and 17. 13 and 17, so the key verses. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Least, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. That's verse 17 of Exodus chapter 13, and that's the beginning of the Shabbat, the Sarat or the Senbet Sarat, the Shabbat uh, Seder, or Tater, which is the order and arrangement for the remembrance of the weekly Shabbat, the Sabbath portion, the Sabbath reading, and the Sabbath, the sabbatical feeding from the Word. So Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. Now, in our chart on page 5, we have Minim Karbihon, which actually would correspond more to to the sense of the English um, where it said that although although that was near. So we have to make a correction here on our chart, and the update will have all of the corrections that we need to, to realign the matter because in the Gutters, which is interesting, in the Gutters, when we look at the Gutters for verse uh, 17, it begins with Sobe, now, now, the Targum, the beginning, is what is equal to Minim Karbihon, although that was near where Sob, where, um, well, actually, Isma Karbit, Isma Karbit, which is in the center of the verse, but it begins off like the Hebrew with the verb part, where it has where Sobe, Fene Womu. Fene Womu is the key, is the key, is alignment of Shalach, Shalach. Now, in the new Iota or Yota, um, Amharic Bible um, software, which is a uh, very crucial software. We give thanks for the um, ESUS.com people who have put together this update of the IOTA or the Bible search program that uses Kedamawi Haile Selassie's uh, authorized or revised Amharic Bible. Um, we have this right here. We brought it up and we looked at the word, um, we looked at the word, uh, uh, go. The word go is the key part, or really to mean send away, send away, or shalach, which is the Hebrew 7971, shalach, or sholach, a prime or primitive root to send away for or out in a great variety of applications. Um, send anywise to a point to bring on the way, to cast away, out, to conduct earnestly forsake, give up, grow long, lay, leave, let depart, down, go loose, push away, put away, forth, in, out, reach forth, send away, send forth, send out, set, shoot, shoot forth, shoot out, so to spread, to stretch forth out. So the idea, the Hebraic idea means a coming out or, or letting go. We have uh, in the in the royal Amharic, if we look at it, orit ze saat miraf asra so sukut era asra sabad says in dihim hone for on his boon a belek ek gize minim kerbihon egazi abiher bethelist a mawiana midurra menged ala meracho wim egazi abiher 
Hizbu Salfuna Baye Gize and Daya Setsito, or a Giptim and Daya Meles, Biloalina. The Targum, King James Version, and came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, for Elohim or God, Xiavir Malet said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Now there's much that can can be learned from this and compared and, and, and there's a lot of uh there's a lot of uh ancestral wisdom that we can learn from this. But the first thing we want to point out is our correction, not minim karbihon, which in the Gutas or the correspondence to the Gutas would be uh in verse uh, seventeen would be Isma Kurbet. Isma Kurbet. In the words that although it was near but it would be more aligned with the idea of sending away or letting go with Feno Womu. In the words Feno Womu Feron Feron Belek Ek Agize. In the words when in the time where Sobe Feno Womu Feron would be properly aligned with Pharaoh uh, Hizbuna Belek Ekagize, and we align that with the the Gutters, the whole phrase Wesobe Fenawomu Pharaoh Le Hizb Le Hizb. In the words, when he let the people go, Belek Ekagize, when they were let go. So this is the beginning um, of the 16th uh, Sabbath, of the remembrance of the 16th Sabbath in our Sarat, in, in the order according to the true Ethiopian Hebrew and according to the true Sabbatical order of um, of remembering the Sabbath. And, and this is how we keep the Sabbath, Yetek Edeseh, by staying in the word of our ancestral wisdom and we study and then we learn to apply it and to see our present reality through that ancestral um, wisdom, which is the word or the logos of the true God, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, or Yehoshua HaMashi. Now, as we read all on, we have in verse 18, it says, But Elohim led the people about through the way of the wilderness. Now, the word way, Balmarinya is men get. And we find something interesting corresponding in the Gutas that it has to let them go of Fenowomu and the alignment with the word of Fenot, which means a way, a road, a path, a Fenot in the Gutas. Bamarinya and Nemharic is it's men get. But it's interesting that it says he led them not by the way of the Philistines. And that has deeper significance as well, which hopefully we'll be able to expound on. But it says that he led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, of the Yam Suf. And the children of Israel, the Dekik Israel, or Yisrael Lejoch, the Bani Israel, went up harnessed. They went up strapped. They went up harnessed out of the land of Gubt, or the Kabat out of the land of Egypt, or out of the lower Egypt, according to the Kamite mythos of the ancient Egyptian wisdom. Verse 19, it says, And Musa took the bones of Yosef, he took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightway sworn the children of Israel, saying, Elohim will surely visit you. In other words, the God of the the Hebs or the Hebrews will surely visit you, and ye, all of you, shall carry up my bones away hence from here with you. Now, this speaks towards the 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 the, the, the firstborn being set apart for Yahweh and leading to the redemption by the power Bechayel which is now leading us to the second stage, or the second stage of the journey, the second stage of the journey.
So, so now we're, we're, we're heading towards the redemption by power, Bechayel, the second stage of the guzo, the second stage of the journey. In verse 20 says, And they took their journey from Sukkot and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness, in the edge of the wilderness. Now the redemption, Bechayel, be power, now the divine presence and the guidance, and, and Yah, Yahweh, went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. Now, the way resonates. There's a, there's a way, there's the truth, and there's the life. Now, he's leading them a certain way. And make note that he didn't lead them the, the way um, through the way of the land of the Philistines that was near to them. He didn't take the expedient route of leading them the way that was near. Now, with Father Abba knowing best, we have to consider why he did that and how that was beneficial and what we can learn from that even in the present day and time. So he, so they took their journey from Sukkoth and encamped in the edge, in, in, in the Etham, in the edge of the wilderness, and Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire. So this cloud and fire combination. What does it what does it mean? What what can we learn from the ancient the ancient wisdom? To give them light, to give them illumination, to go by day and by night. Now this is one of the most significant correspondences with the 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 wisdom of Musa or the ancient wisdom of the Egypt, which Musa or our Coptic Hebraic brother Moses was learnt in and was mighty both in word as well as deed. Now this book, the book of Exodus or Shemot or Zetzerat, the book of the coming out, the coming out right by what by day and by night. Now notice the significance in verse twenty one, and Yahweh went before them. He went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light or illumination to go by day and by night. So the the pillar the pillar of a cloud was the by the daytime to lead them the way, and in the night by night in a pillar of fire to give them light or illumination to go by day and by night, to come out, to come forward to Exodus by day and by night. Verse 22, to complete the chapter, the 2-2, this is also very important, and those who understand the, the Kabbalah, or at least the basic uh, numerology, the numbers, the importance of numbers, will know that the 22 is the, is the Alpha Omega of the Hebrew, or the Aleph Tav of the Hebrew. So he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, from before... From before, now the position is important, from before in front of the people. So this now is the beginning of the remembrance of the 16th, uh, the 16th uh, Senbet or Shabbat, Bet Shalach. In other words, the letting of the people go, Belek Ek Ek Gizeh, the Wesobet Fenowomu, Therona Lehizb, when Pharaoh let the people go, when he finally let the people go. Go now. The complete study, the complete remembrance for this Sabbath. If you consult our sabbatical chart, the Sabbath reading chart on page five, it is from according to the Orit Zemuse or from the Torah, the Pentateuch, is from Exodus chapter thirteen, verse seventeen to Exodus chapter seventeen, verse sixteen. Now we have Judges for the Haftarah or the Nebiyat, the prophetical reading, Judges chapter 4, verses 4 to Judges chapter 5, verse 31. And then in the Burt Hadasha or the Hadith Kidan, the New Covenant, also known as the New Testament readings, is John chapter 6, verse 15 
to verse 71, which is very, very important, and there's a good resonance with that particular chapter with the basic underlying um, um, mystir or the mystery or the mythic matter concerning this area of Scripture. Now, there's much to this. There's much to this, as we've been saying, to the book of, of, of Exodus. There, there is a whole um, system of realignment that we need to become acquainted with so we can properly interpret this chapter in order, in order to have a proper application in these times and to come out of Babylon according, according to the revelation. This is why the scripture is for our instruction because it gives us that ancestral wisdom. So we started with 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 Abraham from Moses' of course we have before Abraham but the significant part of the of the Hebrew story and leading to the Beta Israel story, it begins with Abraham or Abraham. That's what the ancestral wisdom of the Aries in the sense of looking of looking backward, of looking in retrospect to the ancestral wisdom for guidance in the present as well as moving forward. But let's just go over as we have done from before. Let's do this a little bit here now to give an overview and, and we once again encourage you brothers and sisters to really read this and study it and hopefully we'll have an opportunity for some questions and answers soon, hopefully in, in some um uh call conferencing, um, question and answers with trying to work out the basic logistics to that and how to go about it. Um but definitely it's ones and ones uh, personal responsibility to study this, at least to become acquainted or aware of it, and to write down any questions that one may have within their composition notebooks, that's for the disciples that come as amurit, to write down these questions, you understand, or write down certain things that they may might need to be guided with or ask others who might have a good insight or some insight that they can share. And we hope to, you know, do our part, and hopefully each of y'all will do your part to strengthen this organization, the King of Kings and His Christ. Now, the overview of this is basically is chapter 13. The key verse is chapter 17. Now, in chapter 13, it contains the matrix. The matrix is also brought to life in Exodus chapter 13. We would like to go into that at this time, but we want to stick with this overview here, but the matrix, which basically means the mother or the mother's womb. Now, the significant matter of the Exodus, as even Gerald Macy has wrote profusely and given a lot of um, um, good references and, and, and good links that need to be studied and weighed and balanced by each of us individually and collectively in his writings in the Book of the Beginnings and in Natural Genesis and especially in Ancient Egypt, Light of of the World, um, he goes into some very interesting uh, comparisons of the Bible in connection with the Kamite mythos or the ancient Egyptian wisdom, especially the so-called Book of the Dead or the rituals of the per -im Haru, which is actually more correctly translated as um, the coming forth by day and by night. And then in verse uh, 21, it speaks of how Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud and led them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and by night. That is a key hint towards the wisdom of Musa, since we know he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, and that verse right there verse 13, um, and verse 21 of chapter 13, Exodus chapter 13, verse 21, the key phrase is to go by day and by night. That's the part im haru, the coming forth by what? By day and by night. And Acts uh, 7 and I think 21, 22 says that uh, Moses was learning all the wisdom of the Egyptians and he was mighty in word and in deed. Now we have this phrase that helps to connect that, that that gives the connection, you understand, to that. I mean, a direct verse right here, a direct, the opening book, 
you understand, know, the opening words of the so-called Book of the Dead, which is according to Victorian Egyptology or Eurocentric Egyptology, but more correctly, the coming forth by day and by night. Now we have the going to go by day and by night, which is basically one and the same. Now, as we go through this particular sabbatical um, uh, parasha, or parashiot, or the kufl, the kuflotis portion, this reading and feeding, we have the theme of the redemption, the redemption by power, leading to the third stage of the guzo, the third stage of the journey. This particular, this particular um, um, Sabbath is the, the first stage leading into the second stage. Now, in this particular um, sabbatical reading, we have the second stage beginning, as well as the third stage of the guzo of the journey. It continues with, with uh, Yahweh's victory over the pursuing uh, uh, Egyptians, but we need to qualify exactly which Egyptians were these since we know that the Israelites also, or the Hebrews also had an Egyptian identity. We need to clarify, and Gerald Macy actually points out who these particular Egyptians, you understand, were. You understand, or these evil Egyptians, not the good Egyptians, who many of them came out with um, the Hebrews. You understand, because the, the, the link was, the religion, the interpretation of the ancient mythos. This is where the peoples came together. You understand? This is why it mentions the mixed multitude, and this is some of the other areas that um, really need to be dealt with um, topically, subject matter, in order to really bottom it out. But as we continue to move forward in this redemption by power, we have the fourth stage of the journey. The fourth stage of the journey. Then in chapter 15, we have the redemption completing, the completion of the redemption, Bedem, by blood, and Behail, by power, and we have the song of Moses. As it mentions in the book of Revelation, it says they sung uh, uh, the song of Moses, speaks about them singing a new song, the redeemed singing a new song. So the song of Moses that's mentioned in Arai, uh, Arai Yole Johannes, or Johannes Arai, or the revelation, or uh, the vision of Yah's grace of Johannes, points to this particular song of Moses that we have in Exodus chapter 15. So there's more actually on redemption. Those who have the Schofield Study Bibles will see on page 88, there's a footnote, which we would like to get into, but we're going to continue to do this, uh, this, this flyover of the basic portions of this particular reading and the key the key areas. So redemption is one of the key areas, the both the blood and the power. Now the redemption experience continues to the fifth stage. There's the fifth stage of the journey and the wilderness of shore where they found no water, where there was no water. We have the redemption experience continuing to the sixth stage of the guzo, the, st the sixth stage of the journey. How the bitter, how that which is bitter becomes sweet, where it speaks of the bitter waters, the very path of, of Adonai's leading, and it stands for the trials and the tribulations of Elohim's people, which are educatory. You understand? And they're not punitive because we have to learn some hard lessons. It's for our education. It's not a punishment in the sense of being a punitive. Now, the tree that is mentioned at this stage stands for the cross, which became sweet to Christos as the expression, as being the expression of the Abba's, the Father, the Father now being established. You understand? The Father's will. When our maras are so taken, when we take these bitter experiences in this, learn this lesson, and we are able to, to walk in it spiritually, according to the true spirituality, our maras, or bitter experiences, are so taken, we are able to cast the tree, the, the, the zaf, the tree, which is the cross, into the waters, you understand, and therefore turn those bitter 
those bitter, that which is bitter, into that which is sweet. Now, the redemption, you understand, experience comes to a rest. There is a rest. There's a rest after the period of trial, after the period of tribulation. There is a rest. Now, in chapter 16, we have the redemption. The redemption is, is continuing. The redemption experience, the experience of redemption to the seventh, the seventh stage of the journey. Now, at the seventh stage of the journey, the introduction of hunger comes into the equation. At the seventh stage of the journey, there is the condition of hunger. Now, when we look at Exodus in its proper context and we compare the Scripture with Scripture, we, we see a lot of um, correspondence with this to also what Revelation is showing us. So we see the, the Old Testament providing a template and there now being a mystical fulfillment, and even mythical fulfillment of this in the New Testament and in our present reality. We have the manna also being um, introduced, which is the type of Christos, or the type of the Mashi, the giver and the sustainer of the Ankh, the giver and the sustainer of life. Ankh is just a symbol for life. So it is Christ who is that manna who is that machine. Now, what's interesting is that manna, they named it manna because they, they were saying, Mindano, like, what is this? Ma, mana, you know what I'm saying? Mana, like, what is it? They couldn't figure out what this, what this substance was. You understand? So they had called it, they called it um, manna. You understand? They called it manna. I guess it probably looked a little like couscous, perhaps organic food. The angel food was similar to what we know today as organic food. So the manna now, this organic type of angel bread or angel food, is a type of the Mashiach or the Mashiach, the giver and the sustainer of the Ankh, the giver and the sustainer of the Hewat or life. Now we continue in chapter 16. To the Sabbath or the Shabbat actually being given now to Israel, a type of Israel's Mengist or the Malkut, a type of Israel's kingdom when we get to verse 23 of chapter 16 of Zetha'at, chapter 16 of Shemot, chapter 16 of Exodus, where the Shabbat or the Senbet is given to Israel as a type of Israel's kingdom or government, a type of the kingdom or a type of the government. Now, when we look at the Kabbalah or the Kabbalistic tree of life, it's interesting to do a comparison on this because it's at that foundation, you know what I'm saying, which is the bottom part of the tree, the Kabbalistic uh, tree, that we have that seventh. Remember, we're still at that seventh stage, at the seventh stage, and here's where the Shabbat or the Senbet is given to Israel, and according to its type, it is a type of Israel's kingdom, it is a type of Israel's government. Now, we continue into chapter 17. Now, manna there's a, there's a more expanded footnote and teaching of manna, which those who are fortunate and blessed enough to have and to have acquired a Schofield study the reference Bible can consult that. It's very, it's, it's very interesting, you know, and we'd love to go into that in detail, but we want to complete the intention of this particular portion of the sabbatical, um, the, the Sabbath reading and the Sabbath sabbatical feeding, because the rock is also part of the footnote, as well as Amalek, Amalek, which is the grandson of Esau, the grandson of Esau, or those who are born after the flesh, those who are born according to the flesh, and the progenitor of the Amalek, Awiyan, uh, Israel's persistent enemy, is a type of the flesh in the Mitmanan. And this conflict with Amalek, you understand that we find in chapter 17, in this very chapter, it sets forth the resources of man under the hug or under or read, under law, rather than those of the mitmanon under grace. Man under law could fight and pray. But 
under grace is the Memphis Caduceus, the Ruach Kodesh, that gains the victory over the flesh, over the flesh in each of us as Amanyoch or as Mitmanans, and on our on our behalf. But this victory is only as the Mitmanan or as the the faithful, the Amanya, walks. In the Memphis, in other words, we only have this victory as long as we walk in the spirit, similar to in the whole Star Wars thing when they would say, use the force. But this is to say, as long as we walk in the spirit, you know, saying we must walk in the Memphis, walk in the Ruach, acting in independency, and we act independent of the Memphis, of the Memphis Caduceus, or in disobedience to the Memphis Caduceus, it is Amalek. Or the flesh that gains an easy victory. And much like Saul or Saul, the first king of the Beit Israel, we are prone to spare the flesh as Saul did, forgetting. You understand? And forgetting. Forgetting. And that's how Saul lost the kingdom. You understand, he could not keep the kingdom. Now, as we get into that portion of scripture, I want you to reflect on reflect on this note here that we have at the footnote on page 92. It's an important note, and look forward to us uploading a free downloadable um, Schofield Bible, whatever free will donations one's want to give. Um, one is free, and give thanks. They help us in this particular work. But so that those who are seriously seeking to study these can be on the same page, we have the entire um, Schofield uh, study, the reference Bible, the particular reference Bible that we utilize as disciples of the King of Kings and His Christ, the English, at least the English reference that we utilize which is an invaluable um, study uh, tool and a study resource. So we're seeking to have that online ASAP. So please look forward to it. If you don't find up there shortly, just uh, go to the lojsociety.org and just remind us because the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. So there, there's, there, there's things that are not completed or not done because there's only a few who are seeking to, you know, who are seeking to uh, co-labor with us at this present time. That might change in the future, but at the present time, that's the way it is. So in chapter 17, the redemption experience reaches the eighth stage of the of the journey. Now, at the seventh stage, there was hunger. Now, at this eighth stage of the guzo, of the journey, there is thirst. There is thirst. And the redemption experience includes the water, the water, the wucha from the rock, which is a type of the Mashiach, a type of Christos, the giver, the giver of the manifest, the giver of the spirit. And there's a connection with John chapter, chapter 7, chapter 7, verse 34. Now, as we move forward the, in this redemption experience, in the book of Exodus, that aunt, we have the conflict, as we already mentioned, the conflict with Amalek, the conflict with Amalek, you understand, and the introduction of the name uh, Yahweh in the sea, in verse 15, in verse 15, and this completes the, the chapter, so this portion this sabbatical, the 16th sabbatical portion, Be Shalach, or Be Lek Ek Ek Gizeh, where So Be Feno Womu, according to the Hebrew and the Amharic and the, and the Gutters, which basically means let go or going, when they were let go. You understand? When they were let go. Speaking of when Pharaoh let the. Beta Israel go. Now, according to the mythos, it becomes very clear, and this is where Gerald Macy's works also must be um, referenced as we seek to uh, reconstruct and realign the, the true matter in this very significant and prophetical space and time that we're in. So, this is just giving an overview. Now, each of these, each stage, so we began off in the second stage, and we already reached up to the eighth stage. Now, each of these stages needs to be um, studied and reviewed and, and gone into separately, in a, or at least in more detail. 
you know what I'm saying, to really understand how important that there's no idle word according to the, the the scripture and according to the spirit that's used here. Each word, in other words, each word, each uh, 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 verse, you understand, know each particular portion, you understand, know or kuful in the Amharic or, or, or parasha or parashiot, plural, kufloch, each portion has its particular meaning and keys in it that helps us as we go to the New Testament, as we seek to, to follow and to, and to be discipled and take the yoke of Christos upon us and to learn of him who is Tehut, who is the humble one. You understand? We need to go into this separately, you know what I'm saying? But this particular sabbatical area is very important because now we have the Shabbat, you know what I'm saying, or the Senbet being given to Israel in this particular portion, in this particular reading, which which begins with Pharaoh or Pharaoh finally releasing the Beit Israel, or according to the mythos, the Beit Israel, the followers of the Father, you understand, the Father God, you understand, being being let go and coming out of the underworld or out of the duat, you understand, where the book of the book of uh, the coming forth by day and by night, falsely called according to Victorian Egyptology, the book of of the dead, you understand, is connected and begins, we can say, by verse. In chapter 13, verse 21, we have the beginning, in the sense, of the book of the dead, according to the Hebrew, and right here in our Bibles, because of this significant, this significant phrase, to go by day and by night. Yovah is to go by day and by night, or the purtim haru. You know, in the coming forth, you see that going, that beshalach, or belek ek ek gizeh. Or wesobe fenowomu, you understand? Wh- whatever language we look at it in, whether the Gutas or the Ethiopic or the, or the Hebrew or the Royal Amharic of the Metz of of Kadamawi Haile Selassie, and we get to the root matter, it gives us the the various the various uh, perspectives or the various different um, shadings of the word that we have in the phraseology that we have in the part im haru, you understand, in that coming forth by day and by night. Now they are going forward by day and by night, and this is why we can align much of this book of Exodus with the Kamite uh, mythos or the mystir, with the dark sayings and with the ancient ancestral wisdom. You understand, out of Egypt, I've called my son out of Egypt. Now it will begin to make, hopefully, more sense. You understand, what is the right perspective to interpret the right hermeneutic, you understand, the, the correct, the rit which is the true and the living faith or the correct interpretation of this particular matter that has been um, so, so uh, blasphemed and twisted and distorted in, in so many ways, especially by the counterfeit uh, Gentile um, Christianity or whitewash, white European and Western Christianity has done a lot of, of, of damage to the proper alignment of the matter. But we can say that some of the Europeans recognize that European madness that we know in the Charleston Heston perversion, the other perversions of the ancient Egyptian story that most of y'all might have grown up on, like many of us were exposed to. It is ones like Gerald Macy that really did a sincere, honest, and a worthy attempt to realign the matter and point to the true origins out of Egypt and out of Ethiopia, from the root out of Africa and out of the 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 black man's experience. Not just the black people today, but it came out of the primordial, the original black people. You understand? And this is one thing that a lot of um, deceived and deluded people don't want to recognize today. And this is one of the reasons why um, religion has been used um, as as a means of uh, bondage, you understand, and the very exodus from the land of bondage was an exodus from a spiritual 
Egypt. This is why Revelation reminds us of this spiritual Egypt. So when we are able to uh, perceive and receive this spiritually, you understand, then we will get the proper context to the matter and be able to have have um, guidance. You understand, and overstanding and overcoming for our present time and and for this this present um revelation in this present revelation time that we're living in so brothers and sisters i know there's much more that we would like to touch on but we wanted to give a good a basic overview to this you understand and then hopefully as we have time and hopefully you y'all will make the time as well in your homes to um keep the to remember the sabbath to keep it holy to make the you know to do these studies you know just go over it i mean one doesn't expect like there's much more that we want to touch on and every time we do a posting or a teaching we know there's some areas that we're not going to be able to go into all the detail but to do as honest and as as clear an effort to present honestly you understand and faithfully and truthfully the the truth of the matter, you know, the evidence that we have so that ones can um, find the truth for themselves and ones can have food for thought, food for thought. So more to come, brothers and sisters. Yah willing. Shabbat Shalom. Senbet Salah. And when the Lamb opened the seventh seal, silence covered the sky 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 Shabbat Shalom Sanbet Salam